like I'd like all my audio to be reversed, please. <laughs> and then say and then synced. Huh. Baby turn around. I wanna see you now, not then. I'm not sure what'll happen, but I'm sure that we could feel it out. So do you put like head maidens in your in your song? No, I put I put like I say hidden sounds, but I put sounds in there. Like when I like I love like Foley is what they call it, you know, like so I've done stuff for like cartoons and stuff. When you do T V they have to do Foley tracks. And I was like, Oh man, I want this in my music, so That's pretty cool. Yeah. Are we is this recording? Is this part I of it? I think so. Yeah. It's pointed at the iPad. Yeah. He's just live on TikTok. I'm just going to stare him down. Is there one person there? He said. How did you get approached for the like cartoon sort of gig? Um, my girlfriend at the time, she got a Twitter DM from the guy who was the producer of this show called Adventure Time, which is a show that we love. And so we talked about it. And then I met, we met them and we did... They sent us a they sent us an episode like that was like not colored and stuff, you know, like four so frames per cool. second. And they're like, cool, there's two songs in here. And like, I just couldn't be bothered to read everything. So I did both songs. And they're like, no, no, we only wanted one song from you. But they used both. And then they hit me up for another one afterwards as well. No way. I actually yeah. love Adventure. I'm, you know, it's so weird. It's amazing. Yeah. So me and Josh just before we were listening to your music and he said like, this guy could really write for cartoons. Like, I feel like I could see him writing for Adventure Time. So yeah. that we, he's just pulled a face behind the camera there. Like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> like, Josh, pick your jaw off the floor there. Like, we cannot yeah. believe that. Oh, like, yeah, God. no, it's I cool. I love Adventure Time. I'm such a fan. Yeah, I got to go to L.A. and see them record an episode. That's and so I good. cried my eyes out. <laughs> I was so I weird, like, know. meeting the actors and stuff and then, like, seeing them do the lines. And, and like, the direct... Like, they care so much. Like, I did one episode that was, like... It was basically the episode where they were going to be public about the fact that PB um, and Marceline were actually dating. Like, they were going to, like, fully... So I got to write that song, which is basically Marceline. Yeah. So, but it was, like, really, like, you got to see how much they cared about the lore. That's so cool. Because they were like, cool, no, this happened and this happened in that episode. Because there's, like, hundreds of episodes. But, like, they make sure that all that lines up. And so it's, like, it's kind of like Twin Peaks, but it's not like Twin Peaks in the way that Twin Peaks, like, David Lynch is like, that. <laughs> Some of it's just red herring, so fuck you. That's Can crazy. I say, fuck like you? I literally <laughs> I have Adventure Time merch. Like I have oh, I yeah. used to have posters in my bedroom and everything. I used to love Bemo. Like he was my guy. Yeah. I also have a backpack that's Jake, but it reverses and then it's Finn. Yeah. It's pretty fucking cool. Like that's such a sleigh. That's a flex. Yeah, it's cool. I feel like that show as well, because it's so like heartwarming to watch. I feel like it'd be really nice to be a part of that like crew and that team and like just work with them. Dude, so the producer, Adam Mudo, you know, like he'll send me letters and stuff every once in a while. And it's like, the paper is amazing. Like it's got amazing little animations on it. He'll always draw a little thing. And then like his handwriting is dope. He'll always send me stuff. Like I think he goes to Japan a lot. That's he'll always send me like little like bits of stationery and stuff. And it's like, oh, this is a classy That's dude. so sick. Yeah, very warm. A good guy to have like yeah. as a friend. Yeah. And like LA is a crazy place. Like music industry in LA is crazy. But when I went there last time, I got to like hang out with the cartoon world as well. And it's like, oh, no, these these people That's are so amazing. Sick. They're That's so something goofy. that you never, ever hear about. Yeah. You so learn so cool. much from them, too. Like I, I learned so much from the guys who write Adventure Time episodes. They they told me like when they're writing um, episodes and they're looking at jokes, they like um, they keep a tally of how hard did they laugh the first time they heard it. Because, like, in a way, that's like the pure thing, like your yeah. first reaction to it. So I try and think about that with songs. I'm like when did it feel good and then like recording it is almost just like a kind of trying to capture that because you can get so caught up in like if i tell you a joke a hundred times like first couple times it's funny and then like it starts to get really annoying so you yeah. will change that joke to make it funny to you but you're in a weird place where you've listened to this joke or this song like way more than anyone else ever will so that's so unique. yeah i picked I've that never, up from i've like, never thought of that it's kind of like a comedian like when they have their set and they have their show and they have certain jokes that they like obviously use and use again mm. like when they go to different cities and stuff i'm sure it lands differently and they probably present it different i've never thought of putting that into like writing music that's so clever yeah well it's you like got you're a cool brain i don't know i mean i think like art is art you know like that's that's like universal like you're you're trying to like that guitar is just sat there right like that guitar yeah it's awesome but it's not doing anything right now it needs me it needs me and like without being like a 
Like it needs like a higher being yeah. to go and make it do something. But like if you want to make great art, you got to be that. And you got to let something come and like play with you. That's so inspiring. That's the way it is. Like that's if you so have like dope. a plan or an ego or something, like that's like you smell like crap to any like thing good from I above that you want to like get. I'm yeah. Living for your like mindset. <laughs> this is so cool. This is so insightful. I feel yeah, like I'm sitting huh? talking to like a life guru. Oh, don't, dude. That's like the worst, like that's like the worst thing like indians is like bro that's all we're doing right now is indians are just like trying to sell westerners like self-help no, <laughs> i'll just it's be so one of those inspiring to listen to like the way you're saying that guitar is just sitting there but it needs a higher power you need to be the art to create something like you can have the tools you can have the means but unless you put the work and you do the art like it's yeah. not gonna happen it's really fucking cool i think like your ego is useful to help you cross the road or something like okay i'm here there's a car there that's about as useful as it is. Yeah. The rest of it, you don't need it, dude. Tell me how it is. Don't tell me what it was. Was fun when we were kids, just trying to catch a buzz. But what have we become now, deep down? What have we become now, deep down? If every day's a gift, I want to fill my lungs I feel it from the earth, I feel it from above I need a little rest and I need a little sun Hit me with your love, I will not run Hit me with your love, I will not run Where do you think the line's drawn between ego and confidence? I don't know. It I think it's, like that's part of it, trying to figure it out. It's This is the problem I feel like. I, this is the problem I have with social media is that everyone goes to what they want to hear, right? But, like, no one goes to what they necessarily need to hear. Like, because there's so much yeah. content out there and everyone's making it for the void. So, like, yeah. how can I, like, even now it's like, I can tell you something about myself or whatever, but, like, I'd hate to give you advice or do something like that when it's recorded because it's like someone I, someone who I don't know and I don't know their situation might take it out of context yeah and like but that's anything that's life that's just people now like we were joking before yeah and I think was it you John that said something about being offended and I was like sorry that my existence offends you like it, it was just a joke <laughs> but that's how life is now like mm. any anyone can take offense to anything if they want to really. yeah. It's, yeah it's like comedy it's like humor it's subjective like art yeah like music for sure yeah, I try not to get offended. I feel like now when I get offended by stuff, I'm just like, whoa, what's I, wrong with me? Yeah, why I have feel I got like offended? I turn the question on me. I'm like, why am I offended though? Yeah. Like, what about that is offending me? Mm. I think there's always like a question of like, what can I fix about myself? Like you always want to be the, the best version of yourself, even if it's like the best performer or the best friend or best partner, or whatever, like you're always trying to sort of better yourself. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Like I am... Um, I think most of my life I've like, I think people told me I was good at music when I was a kid. And then like, I got signed young and then it kind of felt like everything should work for me mm -hmm. and it just didn't. And like, I think a lot of me like rediscovering like what I like about music and what makes good music is me forgetting about, forgetting about like what the, the world kind of wants for me mm -hmm. and stuff like that and then weirdly i don't even know where i'm going with this hopefully it lines up at some point and like i channel something that means stuff to people i don't know how old were you when you first got signed well 21 which isn't that young it's pretty young, i had a though. manager though when i was 16 this guy called matthew fletcher he manages busted and mcfly <laughs> oh, no way and he i met him and he was the first time I ever went to a, a big studio was when I was 16. And it was this guy called Hugh Pageant who like recorded the Bee Gees and stuff. Sick. And, uh, you know, they're playing the song and it sounds amazing. And, uh, and then he like pauses the track. And like after the track, you hear this. Caw! Right, it was like the tail of the song. So like the time based effects that are happening in the song, like when you pause the song, if they're going to like analog outboard, you hear that for a second. Right. Like that halo of what's mm -hmm. happening in the song 
when your ears aren't trained, you can't really hear it when the song's going. It's really easy to hear it though when that tail happens. And I feel like in that moment, I like, although I was there to basically become like a pop band, the moment he like hit that tail, like I heard that tail and I heard like what the studio could do. I was like, cool. Like I don't want to be like these dudes in McFly. Yeah. Like, and like, you know, actually, um, Dougie is a dude, bro. I love Dougie. Yeah, he, he's pretty cool. He's a dude. Yeah. I love him. But I was like, no, nah, I want to be like him, dude. Like, I want to know how all this stuff works. Like, this is amazing. So so did you go into, like, production side of thing and try yeah. to teach yourself that? Yeah. So I'd been kicked difficult. out of school. And then I'd been kicked out of school in Switzerland. And then my, my mom was like, there's somewhere you could do music tech. And my mom's been so good with, like, fanning whatever that helps kind lot, of interest I've got. Yeah, huh. She's really good for, for sure. that. High up in the mountains, high up in the mountains, high up in the mountains, beyond the man-made roads. I just kept on climbing to where I felt compelled to go. Whoa. I got lost, but that was so exciting. Huh. I saw gods, and they were smiling, <laughs> way above the clouds, the world I've known came crashing down, and freed of all my doubts, look I don't need to fight you now. <laughs> world I see is happening for me, for me, for me, for me, for me. The world I see is happening for me. Huh. Obviously you're from New York, but mm -hmm. do you want to tell everyone like how you came over to this country and where you got started and just a little bit about your journey? Yeah, I was born in New York. My parents had moved over there for work and uh, yeah. I moved from there when I was eight, moved to Abu Dhabi. I always feel like such a, I feel like people are like, whoa, what's Abu Dhabi like? Um, I was there a long time ago. I'm old now. I was there in 95. Yeah, it's changed now. It's all very commercial. Oh yeah, it was like yeah. a building site when I was there. Yeah. They had that, I was there when they opened the first McDonald's because like no when I first moved there, you weren't allowed foreign businesses. So it was like no super way. Arab when I moved there. Yeah. Um, there was one hotel like in Dubai, like that whole strip that's now like hundreds of like hotels. The there was yeah, one yeah. hotel there. Sick. Yeah. It was nuts. Um, so cool. I loved that. And then Switzerland after that. This is all for my parents' work, by the way. They just like, they just work wherever they get the most money. I guess, that's been know? so cool though for you to get all that life experience. Just so young, just traveling around with your parents. Yeah. It is cool. Yeah, you don't it know is. it at the time. Picking up do different you? cultures and stuff. No, you don't. But like no. looking back, you're like, that's pretty cool. For sure. I think one of the best things about it, like, is me and my sister are super tight because, because we moved around places and then you always have this, like, three to four month period where you don't know anyone. Yeah. But, like, you're like, oh, yeah, my sister. No. Cool. So, like, hang out with her. Like, I'm really tight with my sister. Does she play music also? No, nah, she started, actually, she started on guitar. I started on piano and she had a guitar and then, like, people would always come around the house and, like, no one wanted to hear piano songs, you know, like. <laughs> Chicks just don't <laughs> dig piano. Chicks dig guitar. <laughs> so, like, I started, like, learning guitar. And um, are you, like, better than her? Are you, like... I don't know. Girl? She can still... She can kind of shred some classical, but, yeah, she's... That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Shred she, some classical? Yeah, she's in video games. Is she's she much older cooler or than younger? Me. Younger. That's cool. Yeah. It's nice yeah. to have a little baby sis. Yeah, no, for sure. She's the best. I mean, she acts older, but... <laughs> I think that is always the way it is. Like, my brother's, like, five years older than me, and I'm sure if you put us both in a room, people would think I'm more mature. Yeah, but yeah. Boys just have that kind of era or aura about them in it. Maybe, it's yeah. It's Maybe if they have a good sister, I guess. She worries about a lot of stuff for me. That's all, <laughs> also perfect. Yeah. Isn't it? But so sure. she does, like, video games? Does she, like, do Switch and stuff? Does she do what, sir? Twitch. No, no, no. She, uh, she like, works for PlayStation. No, she's cool. She's in, yeah. So you're Logistics. like a very successful family in all your rights. Like, no, 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 no. Successful no. in your fields. Not at all. Like I'm, the, I'm the black sheep. Everyone else has done well, and then I'm like. If you're I'm, the black sheep of the family, goodness. You're I'm like so the successful. one who's. Ha I don't know. I mean, like it's all perception, isn't it? It's like, so because we talked about Adventure Time, it's like whoa, like you've worked on Adventure Time. Like, it's probably amounted to like a week of my life. 
collect so all of it you know like <laughs> it's not yeah, no. like yeah i love it so cool but i don't know most of my life is just like working on songs doing mix tweaks like doing like you know it's not what, what kind of line of work makes you the happiest is it like writing for other people is it writing for yourself is it performing like what makes you truly happy when you're creating your music i like it all i actually do like it all i mean like maybe i don't like social con social uh media and stuff like that but yeah like re writing recording working with other artists touring all of that stuff that stuff's all cool like you know songs songs are awesome because they're kind of liquid in this way where it's like the recording is just one version of it you know like there's the version like that happens right now like the mm -hmm. one that i played like the live version and someone might sample it at some point yeah. and there's another version Cover and like yeah and i love that i think that's cool and it's nice to just like enjoy all versions of it i think with live it's definitely special when you've written songs and then you get to meet people at gigs who say like the song means whatever to them yeah. and you're like oh that's really cool yeah especially when it's not what you thought it was going to mean yeah. i think that's the really cool thing like you write something you're like this is so specific to me and then the someone people, else. They'll <laughs> yeah. relate it to their life in whatever way possible. Yeah. You know, it's like when people watch those like, um, like psychic mediums online and they're like, oh, this relates to me. This relates to me. And they're probably just pulling out tarot cards being like, oh, yeah. So there's something big coming in your life. There's a massive change. And people are like, oh, it's me. I'm getting a new job or I'm getting divorced. It's me. They all think the reason's for them. But it's whatever you take, whatever resonates with you. That's so like that's the, the beautiful thing about music, I think. Like someone could hear a song and think, oh, that's, oh, that's so painful. Or like, that really brings me back to a time where like, I feel like hurt. But someone could listen to that and go, that is the most beautiful, inspiring, loving thing. You know, it's all your own subjective opinion, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like the words, it's weird. Like the words, you sweat the words, but like actually like the it sounds like such a hippie saying this, but like the whole like the music and the overall like tone and vibration of it like that actually means so much more than the words yeah and that's exactly what you said like look at hey ya like that yeah. song is like where that's played normally in like clubs and stuff that song is basically like not not condoning that yeah, lifestyle yeah, yeah. <laughs> but people don't really care yeah. they're like what well, feels upbeat so i'm gonna dance to it exactly it's, yeah. it's what feels good and what sounds good isn't yeah, it? yeah for sure nowhere else on Earth, I would rather be nowhere else on earth. I would rather be. I've tried writing it down or to turn it into sound, but the words that leave my mouth. They let me down. Hot, hot. I'm trying to keep it in the moment. Hm. I'm trying to own it, own it, own it. But I keep forgetting what you told me. Huh. Let it go, it'll come back again. Let them grow and turn into friends before the end. There is nowhere else on earth I would rather be. Nowhere else on earth I would rather be. What do you think is the most important thing for you as like a musician? Like, is it staying true to yourself? Is it, you know, putting out something that's completely real? Or is it pleasing look, babe, like your audience? I think like, yeah, I, I think pleasing the audience is a is a slippery slope to nowhere. Um, I think um, I, I saw something crazy when I was in India, like um, Haridwar is this like city that's like by the river and they do this thing called the Ganga Puja. It's like this big fire ritual they do every night for like dead people. It's pretty like intense. And there's loads of like wild weed there. So, like, pick, cool. pick weed off the uh, by the riverbed, pick weed, smoke weed, and then do this crazy thing. And like get there, and like so the first time I'd smoked as well, like for ages, so I'm like super licked. Walking over, and then like there's like literally the comedy thing of like 
not comedy, but like cartoon, I should say, thing of like a body with, uh, you know, like a sheet over it and the foot poking out and then like flies going around the foot. And it's like, this guy is dead. It's kind of morbid, like, isn't it? So right next to the dead guy, there's like a bunch of other dudes and they're all like this. You can just see their ribs and everything, dude. These guys are so skinny. And so I'm like, I say to my cousin, I'm like, dude, should we try and feed these guys? He's like, they won't take your food. I was like, okay, they won't take my food? He's like, no, no, they're meditating. It's like, wow. And so, like, they're chasing this thing called pranic energy, which is basically, like, we all feel it. It's like as soon as you're interested in something, you don't, like, need food or, like, the general like biology of energy right like you put something in you and like you're a factory and you will burn <laughs> you're gonna burn. like but there's also there's energy and interest right that's why like when your mom told you there's no school today all of a sudden you fucking wake up right mm-hmm. we all have that i'm trying to chase pranic energy i'm trying to chase my interest and if my interest right now is like to play guitar or do something then i'm gonna do that but also at the same time if it's like no music sounds bad to me right now like i'll go for a walk do yeah. something you know like the rhythm of my life is like i'm drawn to do music all the time i try and break it up and to answer your question um in a very convoluted way that's all i try and do is like try and chase my my interests yeah um and make sure that i'm aware enough of myself that i'm not harming anyone else and that other than that just enjoy it (laughs) that's so inspiring so inspiring it's literally been such a pleasure to talk to you and the whole adventure time thing is just like (laughs) made me a super fan i think it's so cool like i think i'm in like the presence of a legend right now so it's so so cool but you're so inspiring i'm sure there's so many people are going to watch this and be like wow like i have a different perspective on things like it's this has been a really great chat so thank you so much yeah thank you too thank you